think it's sad. What does it say? Yeah. Okay, it's, it's, it said start a recording. Bismillah. So, um, like I was saying, I, I, I really wanted a situation where whatever uh, 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 things I'll be discussing in the videos are uh, in line with what somebody who, for example, is in residency would be able to benefit from, you know, and just really, really, really practical practical stuff if you, if you get what I mean and I think I think it obviously starts with um, what happens from the ED I totally agree hi guys uh, my name is Fatai um, I'm a hospitalist working in South Carolina um, I've made videos on this channel and at this time I'm bringing a very dear and close friend of mine um, to join me on these conversations about the practice of medicine, especially here in America, it's, it's, it's especially in internal medicine, which is what we what we practice. And it, it could take a whole lifetime to talk about things that we face and things that we see every day and how to deal with them. So I'm, 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 I have my dear friend here. So Mubarak, you can introduce yourself. Hi. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Mubarak Yusuf. I'm a first year internal medicine resident here in New York. Uh, I met Fatai some years back. Uh, we trained in this, uh, we went to medical school in the same place. He has been a friend, a mentor, a brother to me. So I'm really excited to join him here today. And so we can uh, discuss some medical stuff and other non-medical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's great. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. But the question you asked the other day, I think is a good place to start. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times what happens is people... People come in the ED and, you know, they call you, whoever is supposed to be admitting this patient, with a very vague um, idea of why the patient should be admitted in the first place. Absolutely. You gotta, it, <laughs> I think everybody can agree to that. A lot Absolutely. of times you want to argue with the guys in the ED and... Uh, they, they, they they just find, they just literally find some excuse. A, a, lot of a lot of times, you know, in their defense, a lot of times it's more so, you know, a safety thing where you look at the patient, you know in your heart that it's not safe to send this patient home. You get what I mean? And you're trying to figure out how best to keep the patient in the hospital and you just throw up some, some admitting diagnosis from someone. <laughs> Well, ideally, ideally, for any admission to be valid, you should have an admitting diagnosis. You understand what I mean, right? Yeah, absolutely. You definitely should have an admitting diagnosis, and that admitting diagnosis obviously should match with what you're seeing in the lab. It's not like somebody's telling you, you know, this, uh, I'm admitting this patient for AKI, and when you look at the creatinine, they already, already they always had CKD, right? So the creatinine baseline is <laughs> like 2.5, and now the creatinine is 2.6. You know, how, how effectively can you describe that as, you know, mm -hmm. acute kidney injury? Yes, you can say it's acute kidney injury on current kidney disease, but just a tiny change in the baseline doesn't really represent much. So that, that's what we always encounter, where you're really trying to figure out whether the admitting diagnosis matches, you know, uh, uh, what the patient is presenting with, obviously from the history and uh, uh, the lab findings and everything that's involved. But again, you have those patients that just have so many comorbidities, so many things going on, and you're trying to figure out, because and what happens again is uh, the, the ED staff can say, okay, I'm admitting this patient for AKI, using that same example. And you're looking at the labs, you're like, wow, there's like <laughs> six different things going on, whether chronic or acute, but mostly you know, chronic situations where you're trying to figure out your plan of care in accordance to that. So, but, but what, I, what I always encourage is when you look at a patient like that with so many comorbidities and you're trying to figure out admitting, admitting diagnosis, the best way to do it would be to look at all of those diagnoses from baseline and see if there's anything that has changed from baseline, you know, um, if a patient had, you know, a heart failure, reduced ejection fraction, a heart failure, preserved ejection fraction, or any history of heart failure, um, you know, are they in an exacerbation of that? You know, is there anything in the lab that, or in the in the clinic? Well, heart failure is a clinical diagnosis by by you know most stretch. Is there anything in the presentation that matches 
an acute presentation of a chronic disease. Uh, um, if, if you're talking about COPD, you know, is there anything in the acute presentation that mat, uh, 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 that that represents a change from the chronic baseline? And that's kind of how you're going about it. And a lot of times you see that patients have so many different, you know, acute presentations at the same time. A classic, classic example is a patient with shortness of breath. Yeah. You know, there may be elements of CHF going on. There may be elements of COPD going on. But even despite that, you can't rule out pneumonia because there's all this, you know, pulmonary vascular congestion and the x-ray that you really can't see any significant, you know, airspace uh, uh, disease or any infiltrates to say there's pneumonia. So you almost want to add pneumonia there. For example, if they have a fever and they have a white count, they might be coughing or something like that. You always, it's, it's like all of these things going on that you might have to treat all of them at the same time. So that is not, that is not unusual to find in, you know, in, in internal medicine when you're thinking about admission where the patient is presenting with a particular uh, uh, symptom and the admitting diagnosis is vague a lot of times there's so many things that could actually represent or, 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 or you know, uh, uh, be in line with the reason for admission for them. You get what I mean, right? I, I totally agree with you. you know, uh, we often get that. And I, I really will not blame the idiot, as you have said, because mm. sometimes it's just like, you know, uh, how can we, like, dispose this patient? Like, the disposition yeah. is just difficult. Like, yeah. while I was working in the ED also, you know, um, I had patients like that. You just have so many comorbidities, right? Yeah. And the patient yeah. look kind of sick, but that's their baseline. Yeah. Right? You really can't send them home because it's just not safe. The patient look drowsy, yeah. you know, the patient, but that's their baseline, yeah. right? You can't pinpoint, is this patient in um, acute exacerbation of uh, COPD yeah. or not? What's yeah. exactly your problem, right? Yeah. And the patient is just there like, uh, but that's their baseline, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's just like, you know what? Maybe it's like getting to the end of the day, it's like six o'clock, seven o'clock, and you're yeah. like, man, I can't send this patient out of the hospital. <laughs> the moment I send the patient out of the hospital, it's going to come back. <laughs> they're going to come right back. Right, they're going to come right back. And, 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 and you know, th these are the parts of the work that don't necessarily, they're not explained in textbooks or in any of the board review materials, but they're just the practical. And that, that I think, is a good way to... To, to kind of channel a lot of our conversations, hopefully, you know, in the in the coming videos, where I feel a lot of those practical things that are not necessarily represented in books, you have to discuss them. And it comes from experience, obviously, yeah. you know. And, and again, it, it's not even unusual to find a patient with so many comorbidities presenting, for example, um, with almost like their baseline picture, but you can literally admit them for social reasons. I don't, Absolutely. I don't, know. yeah, you can, yeah, we do that. Oh yeah. You admit them for social reasons. You admit them for unsafe discharge and things like that. So that definitely is a, is a, is a valid um, reason sometimes to admit patients. Yeah. And most of those patients, you know, they just sleep at night in the hospital and the next morning they're fine and good. They're like, okay, you know what? I want to go home. <laughs> you're like, oh. <laughs> that, that's the best, man. Because at, at the end of the day, you, you never want as a physician, you never want to feel it's not, it's not a fun thing, you know, feeling like you're the person kicking or depriving a patient from a need when they, when they need it. Absolutely. Hold on for a minute. <laughs> Sorry, the little one just... Yeah. <laughs> some demonstration. But yeah, so un unsafe discharge is definitely a, a reason to keep a patient. But at the same time, um, when a patient feels like on the next day they feel good and they're ready to go home, that always makes you feel like, okay, all right, it's 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 <laughs> you didn't have a reason to be admitted in the first place, so it's definitely safe to go home if, especially if you're feeling like it. Um, uh, but at the same time, also you find a lot of these patients that we're talking about with so many comorbidities mm -hmm. that physically they're so debilitated that it's almost impossible for them to get up and say, I want to go home. Absolutely. It always ends up in things like, um, 
you know, they will have a rehab evaluation Absolutely. and the rehab will recommend um, some, obviously they can't walk, right? So you're not going to send that kind of patient home. And re rehab will recommend some form of, you know, whether it's inpatient rehab, which is probably not always going to be the case or like a subacute rehab. I, I promise you what, what, what amazes me about uh, practicing medicine in America is you know, for somebody like, you know, like me who probably didn't have that much experience with the medical system here, it felt like a lot of those, a lot of these things when I started residency felt foreign to me. And I'm sure a lot of people agree, like, you know, the medical part of it is just a, probably a quarter of the situation. <laughs> All of those social, you know, when people, I remember when I started residency and they say, oh, oh, that patient's going to STR. I was like, well, what's STR? <laughs> like, what's all these abbreviations, right? Like, and they say, oh, it's short-term rehab. Oh, wait, what is short-term rehab? What exactly does it mean? Okay, oh, acute rehab. Okay, long-term facility. And it takes it takes learning. I think it's not, it's not invalid to talk about them, you know, for mm -hmm. people, for example, starting residency uh, that definitely want to, uh, you know, obviously, do not feel like they're completely left out of the situation. It, it's, it's good to talk about these things where, you know, the, the things are not necessarily in the books. You're not going to open any, you know, internal medicine review, board review uh, material where they're talking about rehab disposition, for Absolutely example. Absolutely not. <laughs> Nobody's going to talk about that. But there are things that you deal with every day. I think it's uh, it's important to look at it. Just so we don't, you know go all over the place. It, the, the question really was about when you have patients with so many comorbidities presenting to the ED and you really can't find a proper admitting diagnosis for them, you know, if it's unsafe for you to send them home, that's a valid reason to keep them. But as you're doing that, also look at those comorbidities. There's a chance that they may be in an acute exacerbation of one of those comorbidities that could be, you know, a valid reason uh, uh, to admit a patient. And that's really what I was, I was uh, trying to get at. Yeah. And, and, you know, just for the audience, right, the point of this is me as a resident and you yeah. as a hospitalist, right, yeah. I throw out questions out there for oh, yeah. you oh, yeah. oh, that yeah. may be in the minds of other resident or incoming resident, right? Yeah. And, yeah, it's just going to be a short co a conversation. Yep. So uh, to exchange ideas, you know. I think most most of this you have went through while you were doing your residency, yeah. and I'm experiencing a lot of it now. And you know, trying to just um, oh, oh yeah, I, I I completely agree. We can cap of these um, conversations here so far. It's, it's, been, it's been definitely a pleasure. I'm looking forward to doing so much more. We will we we'll, we'll, we can even take questions from you know people who are watching or people yeah, who absolutely. are in one way or the other connected to us. I could even bring questions that my students um, uh, 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 ask me during rotations and things like that. But the important thing is to have that conversation around those questions. But thanks, Mubarak, for All right. thank you very much.